For our next steps, we're going to need to, to drill some holes and cut a slot in the piece. The location of these aren't super critical, but I have marked them out using some layout die. Uh, you can use Sharpie if you wish, um, and you don't have layout die, whatever you've got on hand. Then I've used our parallels since we've been talking about our parallels, and I've used those as ways of locating my marks. Piece is roughly three quarters inches high as it sits right now. Half of three quarters is three eighths of an inch. So we've got a scribe line down the length of the piece to mark our approximate center line. Next, put the piece down on one end and I used three eighths again to mark one of our hole starts. Then I used a three quarter inch parallel to mark some of the location, uh, a registration mark for our slot. Then I flipped it over and I used a 5 8 inch parallel to mark the other end of our slot. I may reduce this to a half inch, we'll just have to see. And then used a scriber to scratch the lines on at each of those points. None of these dimensions are critical. None of these hole locations are really critical. Um, if we're making a matched set, then you know, this is where we'd want to measure them so that each one doesn't come out a little different. But as you make different projects, you're going to find different clamping needs and you're probably going to end up making some uh, customized versions of this. You can make them longer, you can make them shorter, you can uh, get rid of the slot entirely, well, you can do different uh, tip or jaw clamping surface designs, a lot of different variations you can do on this very simple project. We're simply doing something similar uh, to the Sherline step clamp. Now this is their, their step clamp, uh, also referred to as a strap clamp, but it has uh, these machine steps in the end. We're going to do a simpler version of that. For these drilling operations, we're going to use a drill chuck. Uh, this happens to be the quarter inch chuck. It fits in the same way that our fly cutters did previously. It has a uh, number one Morris taper on it and then a draw bar that fits through the spindle and holds it snug in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in place. Now keeping with our um, simple and doesn't need to be super accurate theme, and depending on what tools you have in your shop right now, if, you, if you're just getting started, I'm going to take the scriber point off of one of my little scribers here and place it in the drill chuck and just hand tighten it down. Now I can lower this point down. I don't want to touch the workpiece, but I'm just going to use this as a visual pointer to align my Y and my X axis on the first place that I want to place a hole. This isn't the most accurate method, um, but again, we're kind of keeping with that. This is your first project. It doesn't need to be super accurate. Uh, you may not have all kinds of fancy tools. You may not have edge finders and wigglers and center finders. and So we're just going to do a rough pointing to our marks, and that's going to be plenty fine. So this first hole, I'm going to end up tapping uh, 1032, since a lot of the screws on the uh, sure line are already 1032. We're going to stick with that size to make our lives a little bit easier. Um, a 1032 requires a number 21 drill for tapping, uh, which is roughly 0.1517. If you don't have numbered drill bits, try to go up to the next fractional size which would be a, a 5 30 seconds. And you're not gonna get the best of thread, but it should be acceptable until you can build up your tooling. Now, the next thing, if we wanted to, just for, even though we're not worried too much about accuracy, I am still going to use a center drill. Now, these are two different sizes, just so you can see the one a little bit better. This front one's a number zero, which is an eighth of an inch outer diameter, so that's 0.125. We're gonna go ahead and use that to do our, our center point. So with the drilling operation, I am going to use the key to tighten the chuck this time. Now I shouldn't have moved my X and Y axis from when we indicated that. It's looking to me like either I wasn't paying attention or I was indicating at an angle. So I'm probably going to be a little bit off on this hole. Again, on this project, it doesn't matter. You don't really have to worry about super precision on this project. Smaller bits, you use higher speed. I would normally recommend using some cutting fluid with this operation. But I'm going to try it dry here. These little bits can break quite easily. So 
So feed them nice and slow, back it out frequently. We're drilling into aluminum, so that's why I, I feel comfortable drilling it dry. Again, normally if I wasn't doing this on video, I would just put a drop of cutting fluid on there. And we're just gonna go down a little bit there. We don't need to be super deep. In reality, for this size of hole, um, even a center punch would probably be enough and we wouldn't really need to use a starter drill. If you are going for precision, always use a starter drill or a centering drill. So next up, we're gonna put in that number 21 size drill. Now I'm using what's referred to as a screw machine or a machine length drill. This is a shorter, stubbier drill versus what you'll find most commonly in, in a lot of the hardware stores and uh, places like that, or, or what's referred to as a jobber length. And the jobber length is a much longer bit. The shorter bits um, are nice because of the smaller size of the shear line. We don't have to be raising the chuck up as high to get them into place. Uh, with them being shorter, they're not gonna walk as much, uh, which is why we could have drilled this directly uh, fairly easily in this project. And I am gonna go ahead and put some uh, cutting fluid on there this time. Not really necessary, but it's just gonna give us a better finish. Keep our bit sharper a little bit longer, a little bit cooler. If you're doing this in steel, definitely be using that type of fluid. So go down a little bit, then back it up to clear some of the chips. We don't need to go super fast here. We're not in a hurry. This is one thing that I wish the Sherline had was a ram on the quill, or I should say spindle. Just gonna clear those chips away just for a little bit better view for you guys. Put a little bit more fluid down in the hole. and drill it the rest of the way through. Something I didn't mention is we do still have this up on parallels. We don't want this, we could have it set down in the vise. The problem there is we would dip, drill into our vise and we don't want to do that. Um, you could also point it to where this, this hole is centered along the uh, slot in the vise, but it's easier just to, to put it up on some parallels so that you'll clear it without any problem. And there is one hole uh, done and complete. <clears throat> So these are some handy little charts to have near your machine um, or as I've pasted them up here on the wall when, when you're doing this type of, of operation. So, um, you know, I looked at, I've got a 1032 and what size of bit do I need a number 21 for aluminum and brass. Um, this also gives me the major diameter, so 0.19. And this slot we're going to want to be a little bit larger than that 0.19. The slot on the shear line is 0.2. Um, now we're going to have a problem with, assuming we only have the, the bits uh, that came from, from shear line with our set, we haven't built up a large number of end mills of different sizes. What's the best size we can pick to do this slot? We are gonna have to make it a little bit oversized at a quarter of an inch. And this is where, if you don't want to always to be doing the math, a chart like this, which is just basically fractions, and I've got them listed in 8th, 16th, 32nd, and 64th, as well as their decimal equivalent, uh, can come in really handy. So ideally, we would probably use a 13 64th or a 7 32nd, but we're going to have to go to a quarter inch, which is 0.25. Now, there are a lot of different ways we can do this slot depending on whether we're going for speed and accuracy, uh, quality of finish, things along those different lines. What are our, our goals? Now, in this case, our goal is going to be really uh, ease and, and speed for us. Along those lines, we are going to drill a starter hole. Um, I care about the front to back alignment. I don't really care about the left to right alignment since this is just going to be a starter hole for us. There are a couple of different types of end mills. Some of them are self-drilling or are capable of doing a full plunge cut, others are not. That mainly depends on how close the cutters come to the center. 
On some cutters, you'll see that there's a little circle, particularly once you get up to say like four flute cutters, and you won't be able to, to drill into a piece or plunge into a piece with the cutter. So I'm going to, again, kind of make an assumption here that the tooling you have does not allow you to use the, the mill itself to plunge into the cutter. So we're gonna start with a drill bit. Now you can use a, a 7 seconds, whatever size you, you choose to there. Um, I had my numbered bits out already, so I just grabbed the number one bit out of there, which is uh, 0.228. And we're just gonna drill this dry. And the aluminum's clearing out nicely. We would normally want to, again, kind of go up and down and take those steps, but I'm just gonna show you, we're just gonna kind of rush through it here. This isn't the best for your bits, right? If you want the best life on your bits, um, then you would use lubrication. This also isn't gonna give us the best quality of hole, but that is the fastest way. With aluminum, you can drill it dry. I mean, that bit's not, not even warm to the touch um, and friction is really what we're trying to fight there. Now, I didn't drill this to a quarter inch uh, because we will size it with, with the end mill. So I've taken our 3 8 inch diameter end mill holder and I've chucked up a two flute uh, double-ended quarter inch diameter end mill. The shank body on this is 3 8 of an inch though, so um, that's why we're using a 3 8 inch holder. When you put these in, make sure to uh, put the set screw down onto the flat. This will allow the, the body to slide in and out more easily, be grabbed tighter. Um, you won't be scratching up your collet holder as, sorry, your end mill holder as you take the bit in and out because all the little um, scratches and burrs that you may be creating are just gonna be on that flat piece. Okay, so before I mentioned plunge cutting in that some End mills will allow you to do a plunge cut, others won't. Um, that's to the center of the bit. Since we have a clearance hole already, we're gonna do a plunge cut to size this to a quarter inch, but we're only gonna be using the edges. So even if this wasn't capable of center drilling, we would still be able to do this since that hole is all the way through. So this is the first time we've done this operation. We're gonna start out nice and slow. And as you can see, this looks a lot like a drilling operation. Um, that's because it essentially is. The only difference is instead of using a pointed drill bit, we're using a drill bit with a flat end. Now the flat end means we have to feed slower. Now we've got to be careful just as we talked about before about our cutter length here. So we can still see the very top edge of the cutter there and we're through the workpiece on the bottom. Normally, you don't want to start and stop the bit in a workpiece like this. Uh, I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes so you can get the visualization. Now, in order, now we're basically going to start moving our x axis back and forth, and it doesn't matter which direction we go, which is why I started in the middle. Um, you would probably want to start close to one end of wherever you want your slot to be and then go from there. But just to be able to demonstrate that we can cut in both directions, I started in the middle. For this operation, you need to either use a two flute or a three flute cutter. Uh, four or five, six flute cutters tend to not be as good at these slotting operations. Part of that is uh, chip clearance, but also it's the, the forces that are applied to the cutter as, as we're doing this. The two flute and three flute tend to only have one cutter engaged into the metal at a time or significantly engaged in the metal at a time. So you produce a little bit more of an accurate slot. Not really concerned about accuracy here. We also have a through hole, so we're not too concerned about chip clearance here because our chip should drop out the bottom. Now take this cut nice and slow at first. You don't have to really be in a super rush. If 
you start to hear some of that knocking, you know, you can change your spindle speed, you can put a little bit of lubrication on if you want. Now I'm going to cut a fairly short slot. mainly to keep the video short. Where our endpoint is doesn't matter a whole lot here, but we might as well try to make it look nice. Again, if we're gonna be making, say, two, three, four of these or more, uh, we want them to be consistent from one to the other rather than all kind of haphazard. Let's start our cut in the other direction. Now you could be using air to clear the cutter so you can see your layout lines um, you might have heard me just blowing on it a little bit earlier. Uh, if you're using a lubrication system, which we'll demonstrate later, uh, that will often help clear these chips. So I'm going to raise the cutter out of the workpiece this time before stopping it, which is really the better practice that we should be doing. Now that slot is very short, um, particularly with the registration marks that I made on there. Now that isn't the best way to get uh, a clean and accurate slot, but it does give us a slot. And, and it is probably one of the faster ways. Uh, plunge, plunge cutting would be, is technically the faster way of milling or, or plunge milling. Uh, but with the sure line, we don't have a ram, so we can only plunge mill uh, at a slower speed. So uh, that kind of doesn't really apply here. So we just did a straight cut across. Other ways you could do this is take shallower depths and go back and forth, go down a little bit, back and forth, down a little bit, back and forth. That's gonna produce a cleaner and more accurate slot. Uh, another way that you can do this, depending on the sizes of the cutters that you have, is you can make the slot slightly undersized at first and then come back in and make a second pass uh, with a slightly larger mill where you're taking just that finishing cut to, to make it look nice. But for this project, that type of stuff doesn't really matter to us. Now we have made a very short slot here. I would recommend making this longer. I just wanted to kind of show you getting to those parallels. I would at least get to the point where you're centered on those. Um, so another eighth of an inch in either direction. But depending on what you're doing, depends on, on the dimensions that you're going to make this part to. Now at this point, we really do have a finished clamp. Um, we can dress it up a little bit more. We do need to tap that hole still, but otherwise this is a perfectly capable and functional clamp once we have that hole tapped. If we wanted to, as we've got on our example, we can cut some angles, which we'll do in another video, just to dress it up. You know, we could cut chamfers along these sides if we wanted to, just to dress it up, make it our own. Um, again, depending on how long you want this slot, uh, I'm definitely going to be cutting that larger, but that's how you cut a slot and drill a hole.